Okay, welcome back to the uh, poacher build. And um, in the last video of this, you saw me make these pieces, uh, which I'm not going to lie, were a pain in the butt to fit in there. Uh, because this whole frame was all like tweaked out and spread weird. And what I found out, and also you'll see that uh, I got a little stand on there that I 3D printed. It just kind of uh, just kind of snaps in place. I think I put that on Thingiverse. I don't know. Um, I designed this when I did my uh, other poacher build, but I don't remember if I actually put that on Thingiverse or not. But um, anyways, I'm, I just use this to hold the stand up when I'm working on it, or to hold the chassis up when I'm working on it. Uh, but here you can see those two pieces installed with uh, nuts and bolts. Um, one thing, uh, when you're building your chassis, uh, these pieces right here, where they bend and bolt onto here, on this one, they weren't bent perfectly um, straight. They were kind of tweaked this way. So there was a gap in here, and I think that was keeping these spread open. So I really had to rework that bend flat and tighten those bolts. And um, same with these over here. Once I did that, then I could kind of just kind of manhandle that thing and, and get them straight so that these pieces would fit. And, um, and then, just to make sure I didn't completely twerk this whole thing, uh, what I did was I measured from... Let me see if I can readjust this a little bit here. All right, that might be better. I measured from this bolt to here, to that front um, point here. I measured that dimension, and I measured this way across here. And those were pretty much spot on the same. So measuring diagonal corners uh, is a good way of knowing if your thing is square. And I also measured with this on my frame support, I measured from my workbench up to that point, and from here up to that point, those were the same. And I measured back here, from here up, and from the bench up to here, those were also the same. And also from here down and uh, here down, those were the same. So as best as I can tell, this chassis is straight and square. Um, I'll probably look at it at a few other angles just to make sure. Um, but if your chassis is not straight and square, uh, that theoretically could throw off everything else that you put on it. So uh, I just wanted to make sure that after I you know, put these pieces in, that it, it's all straight and square. Notice up here, that still wants to push out. Um, it does fit better. I did a lot of work up in here, cutting and grinding to make sure that it'll fit. Um, I'll probably just put a little bit of epoxy just to hold that in. So that'll be good. And also I said in the last video that this back piece here, this piece right here, I said I was not going to make that out of aluminum uh, because this is not structural and uh, it was good enough. I did put a piece of aluminum in here to strengthen it, but the thing is bent. It's bent this way and it's bent this way. So what I tried to do was heat it up with a, uh, with a heat gun. I put it in here. If I hold that corner in, you can see that corner is bent out and that way. So I clamped it here, I heated it with a heat gun, which didn't seem to really do anything except for slightly melt it. But I heated it all up and I clamped that end and I let it set overnight so it could just cool and relax and think about what it's done. And then the next morning I took it out and it didn't help at all, it was still bent. But now not only is it bent, it's a little bit melty. And there's no way I'm gonna put this piece of garbage in here, so today, I made an aluminum one, and so this fits in right in here, just like that, and yeah, just like that, there we go, and um, and you know, it's, it's kind of good, I'm kind of glad that I did that, let me take that off, I'm glad I did that because this is pr a pretty important piece, I mean, even though it's not sh as structural as these two pieces are, um, it is a very important piece because it's doing like three things. 
it's holding the back of the frame together and it's holding these straps that holds the uh, the gas tank in place and it's holding the exhaust pipe um, clamps and uh, so if this were to break which I don't trust this at all now now that I've heated it and bent it I mean yeah look at that that didn't take much at all that took very little effort for that to break and if that were to break in the model the whole back end is going to fall apart. The gas tank is going to be loose. The, the exhaust pipes are going to be loose. These are going to flop. So yeah, that would have been really bad. So definitely a good investment time-wise to make a new one of those. Okay, I don't know if I said this in a previous video, uh, but the guy who's uh, the guy who I'm building this uh, kit for, um, he bought a lot of parts from these guys, model motor cars, and I, I highly recommend these guys. They have tons of parts for all the poacher uh, models. They also have lots of uh, stock, aluminum, brass, uh, lots of hardware, tiny little nuts and bolts and screws and washers, and, and they have tools. And um, this is part of their company, the Scale Hardware, uh, or it's off of their website. But um, I don't know if, I guess it's a separate company. Yeah, it's a different name, but it's off their same website. Um, this guy is uh, with Model Motor Cars, Marvin here. And I'm not sponsored. I just highly recommend them because they're just a great company to work with. Um, for example, uh, one of the parts that, uh, that the guy bought were these exhaust hangers. And when I was looking at them, I noticed that there are two different ones here. This one's for the Mercedes. This one's for, I believe, the Bugatti. And uh, so I called Marvin up and I told him and he goes, oh, um, that's a uh, that was a packaging problem. My my fault. I'll I'll send you a new one right away. So uh, easy to work with. Um, you just call them up and uh, friendly guy answers questions. Uh, like I said, just just a great company. Easy to work with. And what um, what I thought I would do with these videos is just um, is just show like all the different parts that uh, that the guy bought for this kit. Um, so, uh, so anyways, I, I think I might have mentioned that in a previous video, but, um, but anyways, he bought parts for the engine, um, interior, exterior, like, like, like everywhere in the car. So I just thought I would do like a video, um, kind of a video series of all these different, uh, different components. Now, as far as the engine itself goes, he got, um, ignition wire and the ignition loom um, cover guard I'm not sure the exact name for that but all the wires come out of that and go to the spark plugs and speaking of spark plugs he also got spark plugs and he got a distributor cap cover and also we got some hose clamps for the engine and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the frame away uh, I do need to paint it um, I don't want to paint it just yet. Oh, you know, what? before I put the frame away, just a couple of other things to point out. When you're building your frame, there is this part right here. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Uh, I don't know if it's part of the brake system. There's a cable that comes out of it, wraps around a little pulley thing. But that gets mounted onto the frame right there. And the way the kit tells you to do it is to run a, a screw from inside from inside here and screw it to here, it screws into that hole, and then that peg would go into a hole here. Well, if this is on, you can't really do that. And also, if you plan on painting this and you want to paint this a different color, then it's, it's not that good to screw that on, paint it, and then you have to mask that off to paint it. So just kind of a pain there. So what I did here and what I did on the previous Mercedes that I did was from the bottom side, I worked in some bolts with some nuts. So I just have the studs sticking out. And when it comes time to mount this, I will cut that peg off. Let's see if I can hold this so you can see it. I will cut that peg right there. I'll cut that off and I'll drill it so it fits over those bolt studs. So that will just go over top of those studs and, um, and epoxy in place. So that'll go over the studs like that. Um, it's better, it's easier, it's more secure, and, um, and I think it just looks better, in, in my opinion. 
Uh, again, you could always do it the way the instructions say and just screw that to the side before you put those pieces on. Um, and just paint it the same color as a frame. I mean, you're never going to see this unless you look at the bottom of the car. So, you know, do it how you want to, but that's how I'm doing mine. So anyways, um, chassis is pretty much done and ready for paint. Um, maybe a couple more parts to put on it, but, uh, well, like this. I mean, this goes in here. Like that piece goes in there. And this piece goes in there. So uh, I'll probably just pop those in and then paint the chassis. But I'm going to do that later. So what I want to do now, I want to go ahead and get started on the engine. The guy who started it already got this much done. He already got the whole crankshaft put together, which is fine with me. Um, but there's the uh, there's your crankshaft. It's kind of crazy how this model has all of the pistons in it with the crankshaft connecting rods. But you would never know it unless, of course, if you're the one who built it. Or now you know it because I showed you. Um, and he also built this piece up. Of course, that goes on which way? Just like that. Like that. And, of course, the spark plugs go in there. So what I want to do first, I want to... What do I want to do? I think I need to go ahead and remove those spark plugs and drill them out to put these in, to put those in. And also these get painted, so I'll need to do that. I need to remove those spark plugs, so I'm going to have to cut those off and drill them through, which, uh, since they're kind of countersunk in there a little bit, might be a little bit of, a, of an issue, but... Um, not exactly sure how I'm going to do that just yet, but uh, I'll just have to start it and see how it goes. I'll probably pull all of this out. I think if I take those three screws out, uh, all of that will come out. That way I can just drill in and not mess up anything here. So I think that's the first step is to remove those spark plugs and then paint this and then paint these and install these and just start assembling the engine. And... Um, yeah, we'll just take it from there and see how it goes. So uh, give me a few minutes to get some stuff done and I'll get back with you. Okay, so if you've drilled as many holes as I have, um, you can probably also uh, be good enough to like drill two holes by eye, by hand, and have them in a perfectly straight line. I can do that every time without fail. But as soon as you add another hole, well, now it gets a lot more difficult to keep them in a straight line. So in order to help make sure that all eight of those spark plugs are in a straight line, um, I'm using my, uh, my CNC router, um, but I'm kind of using it not CNC-ish. Uh, what I'm doing is I have, a, um, I have a bunch of these little drills. Is that going to focus? Uh, that's probably a half millimeter drill on a three millimeter shank. And I have one of those installed in there. And what I can do is I can just manually turn the knobs. I can just manually turn the knobs to line that point up. To line the drill bit up. Right on the tip of the spark plug. So I'm a little bit off there. And I wish I would focus better but I can move that and by eye, get that to line up right on the tip of that spark plug. And then, once I know it's perfectly centered over the spark plug, I then raise it up. I'll raise that up and then I will put in a three millimeter end mill. And then I'll go down and I'll mill out, I'll mill out the spark plug. And um, you can see there's a couple of them I've done here. I have to move it around a bit because the clamps, uh, the clamps won't fit between them. So I had that clamp over this one and that clamp over this one while I did all of those others. And so then I moved it and so now I have to do this one and this one and it'll be done. And then once the spark plug is milled out, I'll put that drill bit back in and then drill the hole. And that way, hopefully, they're all perfectly in a straight line. 
Now the spark plug needs a, um, a 1.4 millimeter hole. Actually, 1.3 would probably be better. Um, but I drilled them with a 1.4 millimeter hole. And this CNC router that I got came with an 11C collet, um, or an 11C collet chuck, and one three, uh, three millimeter collet. And so I don't have a 1.3 millimeter drill bit with a three millimeter shank. So I'm using what I have. Now I went on eBay yesterday and I ordered a whole set of 11C collets. And as soon as I get those, then I'll be able to put a 1.3 millimeter drill bit in it. And, and um, but uh, you know, that's not gonna be for several more days and I don't wanna wait. So, um, so once I drill it with the half millimeter drill bit, then I open it up with a 1.3 millimeter drill using a little uh, handheld pin vise. And so far this seems to be working pretty well. So let me get those last two knocked out and then we'll get that piece painted. We'll get the sparks plug, spark plugs painted and uh, we'll get them installed. Okay, so I just painted these parts of the engine and um, man, my lighting is terrible. But I just painted those, and in my opinion, I know that black probably doesn't show up very well, uh, but in my opinion, the best black to use on these um, on these poacher, uh, on the Mercedes engine at least, is um, engine black, which uh, I know that when they say engine black, they're talking about, you know, train, locomotive type stuff, um, but it is a nice shade of black for these engines. And um, again, it's my opinion. You might have a different opinion, but you would be wrong. And um, so these are still drying. I also painted the spark plugs. And I don't know how well those are going to show up, but I painted the spark plugs white. And um, now if you follow the directions on the website, you're supposed to mask off the ends and then paint the center white. But... Um, but what I actually tried first, so these are cast bronze, and I tried dipping them in liquid tin, but uh, apparently liquid tin is for brass or copper, and it does not work for bronze. All it did for these was kind of turn them uh, dark, not quite black, but dark. So the plan is, once the white paint dries, I will then go over the base nut, with the uh, liquid chrome pen here and uh, the little tip part uh, also with the liquid chrome. Even though you know the, the tip part, you're not going to see that because it's going to have a, a wire with a boot on it covering it, so you're not even going to see that. But um, So I'll either do the liquid chrome or maybe I'll do like, uh, like silver or something. Um, I could mask off the white and then spray in silver. I don't know. I'm still... I'm still figuring out what I'm doing here. Um, but anyway, so those are drying. The engine parts are drying. So uh, once these are all dry and painted and installed, we'll come back and uh, take a look at that. And I'll show you how to how to do the boots for the ends of the wires there. So we'll be back in just a little bit. So here's that part all painted up. And, um, and if we take a look at one of these spark plugs. And... See if we can get that to focus. I just, you saw them painted white. Hold on. All right, so you saw how they were painted white. And um, so I just went over with a brush and some silver paint. And uh, there's a completed finished spark plug. So obviously there's eight of those. And uh, as you can see, that is zoomed in about 10,000 times. And, uh, you know, one question that you might be wondering or asking is, why would you go to the trouble to cut out and drill out the kit molded in spark plugs just to install metal spark plugs? And, well, as you can see here, I mean, the detail is just a whole lot better. The, uh, the kit spark plug was just basically a plastic peg with no detailing on it. And it's a whole lot easier to paint with it outside of the engine like this is, uh, there's no way, at least there's no way I would be able to paint it that nicely with the with the molded and spark plugs. 
Um, and again, you still might be asking or thinking, well, they're just spark plugs. Who's going to be looking at the spark plugs? So again, why go to all that trouble and expense to do this? And at this point, I hate to say it, um, not trying to sound like a jerk, but if you're still wondering why we're doing this, then you probably won't get it if I explain it. Uh, maybe a better question would be to ask, why did Poacher put all the pistons in the engine that actually go up and down? I mean, you can't even see those. Okay, so to, uh, to install these uh, spark plugs here, pretty simple. Um, we're just going to stick them in the hole. Now, I don't want to risk getting CA um, visible like inside of the hole or oozing from the hole. So I'm going to put them in first. There you go. So I'm going to put that in there. And I'm going to hold it flat. And then I'm going to put some CA on the back side. Just put a little bit of uh, CA on that. Hit it with the uh, accelerant here. Give that a second. There we go. But there's one installed. I'm not going to make you watch me install all of the others. Okay, so here's all of that put back together again. So he also got, um, for the engine and the, the, the ignition system, he also got this piece. This is the ignition wire loom. Um, it's just a cast, I'm assuming, bronze piece. It's been chrome plated. It's got holes in the side where the ignition wires come out of. Uh, now this will get mounted. This will get... Um, this will get screwed to the side of the engine somewhere here. Um, obviously, I'm not going to do that till after paint, so I'll cover this in a later video. He also got a distributor cap cover, and um, now this is an optional piece. A lot of the real cars have this. A lot of the real cars don't. Um, so you could go with either the cover or you could go with the boots. Uh, these go over the wires that go to the to the distributor. Now, you only need one or the other, and um, and again, the guy I'm building this for bought both because he didn't realize that you only needed one or the other, and, and uh, he didn't realize that because I didn't tell him that. Uh, he and I were emailing back and forth about which parts to get or not get, and I didn't realize at the time that um, those were for the distributor, so if you get the cap, you don't need those. I think he and I were thinking that those were what goes over the spark plugs, uh, but when you read the directions, um, I'm going to show you how to do the boots for the spark plugs themselves. And these are not needed, so I'll be sending those back um, and we'll be using this. But again, this will be further along the build of the engine, so I'm not ready for this yet. So that will be another video. Um, probably the same time when we'll do these. We'll do those together. And we'll wire up all of the uh, plugs um, when I do those. But for now, we'll go ahead and talk about how to do the boots and so what you need to do is take one of the existing or one of the kit um, ignition wires and that has the boot molded onto it and that already has, I don't know if we're going to be able to see this or not, but that already has a hole that should go right over those new cast uh, plugs. And it is a tight fit. There we go. So that would look something like that. But again, that's not the wire we want to use. So what we want to do is cut that off. And we'll get zoomed in here closer. And obviously you need a drill bit that's, that's uh, a little bit bigger than the wire itself. Let's see if we can get this to focus here. Is that going to focus? Is that going to be as good as we're going to get? There we go. So there's the 
opening that goes over the spark plug, so we need to drill a hole right in there. And I've got this on a pin vise drill thing. I don't think this is going to work. I'm probably going to have to do this on the uh, or with the Dremel tool. So I really don't think I'm going to be able to film or record that because the only way I'm going to be able to do this is if I'm looking at what I'm doing through here and drill that out with my Dremel tool about that far away from my face. Um, so let me do that and I'll get back and show you what that looks like. Okay, that was a little bit tedious. There's just a little... I didn't see that till I zoomed in this far. Um, but basically, I used... Uh, this is my Dremel tool. I used my Dremel tool. That's a tiny little drill. And I basically just drilled in. I basically just drilled in like that. Um... That was a little bit, uh, I mean, it worked, but um, not much room for error there. So once I got that drilled in, now you can take your wire, and this hole is actually smaller than the wire because this is a rubber flexible thingy here, so it'll stretch over the wire. Now you can take your wire and shove it in the hole. That's in. Man, I need to moisturize. Um, so anyways, there it is. That's it. Is it going to focus? There we go. That's it. So then this goes on the spark plugs. This is actually a tighter fit. We're going to be able to see that. Focus. Oh, I need to paint the screws black. That screw wouldn't look good like that, so I'll paint the screws black. Um, but anyways, that's how that goes. That's your wire with your boot on your spark plug. That's the end of this video, and um, hopefully, hopefully you got something out of it, and uh, or enjoyed it at least. As always, until next time, thanks for watching.